All right, so today we're gonna try to put a Hellwig uh, rear sway bar on the back of a 2004 Chevy Express. So I was kind of surprised at the size of the box uh, when it got delivered, but when I opened it, it kind of made sense. Sorry for the lights not being very cooperative today. So that's the sway bar and uh, the hoop on the back. And uh, you'll see that there was a, a package of fasteners that was also attached down there. So you get some instructions, you get a note here about how not to squash the brake lines and do it safely, and some warranty information. So these are the parts you're going to get. You get some uh, thread locker here. Instructions talk about some silicone. Yeah, so there's a bit of silicone in the package there as well. Like most of the uh, nuts are uh, crushed so that they're locking nuts. You have to drill a frame rail on each side for these two fasteners here. Part of the instructions. Then you gotta kind of fish it through with the coat hanger. Anyway, if the generator doesn't get in the way, this uh, should be pretty uh, easy to put together and we'll have a, a video by the early afternoon. Alright, so we get this thing up on the ramps. Hopefully this is the hardest part of the job. All right, looks like we're up. So I uh, got the front wheel blocked on the driver's side, the parking brake's on. So uh, we'll go underneath and see how it's looking. All right, good news for the road track owners. So I moved the generator back three and a quarter inches in the last video. And by doing that, the sway bar will fit between the differential and the generator. Doesn't look like the uh, sway bar is going to hit the exhaust on the generator or the mounting frame. So uh, we're good to go. So looking at the instructions, the next step on doing this is that we're going to attach the sway bar to the rear axle. So I just say to lubricate the uh, plastic uh, bushings in here. And then uh, I also organize the fasteners a little bit. Looks like we're going to be using uh, these fasteners here to attach that to the uh, differential. So I'll just uh, get things sort of into place and we'll uh, show you that part next. I guess I'll try to show the whole assembly of this thing. Hopefully it's not too monotonous for you. So one thing I noticed is that uh, you want to have the uh, long part of the strap facing up when you put it onto here. So I'll do that. The uh, fasteners appear to be uh, imperial, so it looks like it's 9 16 for this part. 14 millimeter also works in this case. They say to do 25 foot-pounds. I'm just going to do everything loose for the time being. Let's put some of this uh, silicone grease on here, whatever it is. So one of the reasons I'm doing this is the last time I drove the van it seemed to sway a fair bit. I'd driven it across Canada about five years ago and it didn't have that issue so I know that the sway bar is not the uh, only thing I need to do to, to fix that. I think that the uh, Bilsteins that it came on the gen or on the uh, van are probably worn out so I'm going to be looking at replacing those uh, before the next big tour we take uh, the van on. 
because I like to drive the vehicle more like a, a car than a camper. That's sort of my style of driving. I like it to ride firm and just go as the regular speeds, and but it's got to be safe in order to do that. The cardboard that they sent with the packaging is very handy here by the looks of it. Sure, working on the thing. They show to you cut to put the uh, slots facing up on here. I don't know if it matters. I kind of thought you'd face it down so the dirt would fall out. But I'll follow the instructions. And the sway bar is solid steel. It is pretty heavy. Just wondering. So they uh, want us to put the fasteners in through the back. I'll probably drop it through. Hopefully the fastener holds it in place. It's gonna take off on me. There. I do it the other way around. Oh, there's always something in the way. This is facing up. Get it on there. Holy cow! this up. Let's bolt through. So this van's got a uh, hundred thousand miles on it now and uh, done it backwards. Apparently I measured the uh, suspension so on the front of the van the center of the wheel to the fender opening is 19 inches and on the rear of the van, the center of the wheel to the fender opening is 21 inches. So uh, I suspect that might play into uh, when we put the end links on up against the uh, frame. So I wanted to mention that now. And uh, I'm hoping to do a 5 inch lift on this van. I'm still doing some research. I want to make sure I don't uh, ruin the handling of it. Because like I said, I like to drive it a certain way. But it needs more clearance. It just I'm uncomfortable taking it some places that I like to go because it could get beached on the like a whale because it's got a 155 inch wheelbase and it's uh, got very low clearance on it. This seems to be reasonably doable one person. If you had it up on a hoist, it might be a little bit more challenging. So I'm just going to tighten these up just a little bit. I don't want to make it snug because I need to move this back and forth. I have, I'm have i nowhere near uh, where I need to be yet. So I've got about an inch between the sway bar and the uh, mount for the generator. And then uh, the exhaust actually might need to be uh, moved around a little bit. I'm going to take a look at this. 
I'll take the camera off the mount so I can show you uh, what I'm looking at here. All right, so uh, I've got the uh, sway bar mounts on the axle, just snugged up to hold it in position. There's no slack in any of the uh, points right now. Looks like I got to lift it up a little bit higher so that the uh, bracket is not just pinching the, uh, the poly there. But you can see the exhaust on the generator could be interfering with the sway bar, especially if I do a lift because then uh, my concern is that if I go over a bump and there's a big uplift on the back, that the sway bar could end up underneath of the exhaust. And then uh, I'm sure it'll force its way through, but I don't really want that jarring sensation when I'm driving. So just let that go down. The other thing I need to look at is the generator fuel line right here. It's going to be in the way of the uh, bars that get uh, attached to the frame. So let's take off that tie wrap and uh, reorganize things a little bit. So that's out of the way. But uh, things are looking pretty good. I think I did the uh, differential fluid one or two weeks ago. And there's no seepage there, so I'm pretty happy with that. And uh, it looks like I'll be able to service that whenever I want with this sway bar here anyway. I think there's uh, maybe two inches past, like a space in between them. The bar is solid and it's, uh, I think it's an inch and three eighths or something. It's pretty thick. So uh, I think the next step in this is that I need to uh, mark the uh, frame rails so I can drill them. These uh, frames have wax on them to protect them in the winter. And if you've seen a Canadian pickup truck from 2004, you'll know that it's not on the road anymore because the frame would have broken by now. So. Uh, I'm going to put something in between the uh, bracket and the frame rail. I don't drive this van in the winter, but uh, the wax on its own isn't really adequate. So I'll have to uh, touch up where I drill it so it's uh, primed and painted. And then uh, I'll figure out something to go in between the uh, parts there as well. Alright, so I was mistaken uh, about the next step. So they want you to put the uh, end links together first and put them on the sway bar, probably so that you can verify that the holes you're drilling in the frame are in the correct location. So these uh, end links are tapered, as well as the, uh, the poly bushings. So again, you take out the uh, silicone grease or whatever it is, and uh, we'll put one of them together. If you go on Hellwig's uh, YouTube channel, you'll see them putting together uh, a different sway bar. Actually you can just jam it together, you don't need to use the uh, vise, but uh, it's there if uh, you're not able to put the pressure on it. So other than that, there's a bunch of junk on the table here, it's not related to anything. I've got a guy I go to a flea market once in a while, and he'll let me fill out a plastic bin like that, and it's 20 bucks for anything, it just doesn't matter to him. He's got a tractor trailer load of tools and he just wants to get rid of it. He cleans up people's homes after they uh, downsize, so he's got no money into it, so it's uh, kind of neat. I bought a bunch of these uh, things here. I can't even tell what they're for. This one's stamped C and H. They all seem to be related somehow where I found them. It's Stamp Mephisto. I'm not sure if it, what kind of tool it is, but it seems like it's more for artwork than it is uh, a tool tool. If anybody knows what that is, uh, please let me know. Well, yeah, I'll get the uh, end links on the uh, sway bar and uh, go on to the drilling after that. All right, so I got the uh, end links on the sway bar. You will need to use a uh, a vise to put the uh, steel shells into the insides of the rubber bushings. You could probably hammer them in with a hammer, but uh, using the vise was pretty good actually, so I'd recommend using it for that. You'll also need 5 8 11 16 and 2 3 quarter inch wrenches to do the uh, final connection here. And uh, looking at the exhaust, I think for the RV people, 
you might be able to shorten the exhaust at this location right here and uh, maybe get a bit more space I don't know if it's important or not we'll see when it's uh, finally assembled so uh, I ended up tightening up these parts here that go under the axle I think it's only 25 foot pounds but just confirming the instructions for yourself what I did was I just pushed it up as high as I could so that the bolt was hitting this bracket because I wanted to get as uh, much of this touching on the bracket as possible on the other end it just ends up pinching it I'm not super excited about that I don't know if there was so much variation in these axles they had to make it so wide but uh, the hole is probably half an inch past where it needs to be so uh, I guess the next step will be to uh, mark the frame and uh, we'll take a look at that in a minute all right so I was getting close to putting the end links on yesterday and decided to stop I wasn't exactly sure where I wanted to put them but in the end I'm gonna go with uh, what it shows on the instructions as far as roughly this is an inch and a quarter wide hole and I've gone back another inch and a quarter to put the uh, bracket here and then the frame rail is four inches wide so I gotta just uh, measure the center now punch some holes here and uh, drill through um, and it might not be perfect but the van is uh, 15 years old now and it's sagged a little bit so there's a, a bit of an angle on the uh, sway bar and the end link but uh, I think that's gonna work for now and uh, if it doesn't I'll, I'll follow up and let you know all right, so drilling through the frame is uh, quite easy. The material is pretty soft and it's not super thick. So then uh, you drill your first hole, then you want them to line up. So I decided just to put the studs on here, then uh, mark a, a line in the dirt so that uh, I know where I'm going to drill next. Because if I did my crayon mark, I would have uh, missed completely. So just do that, and the holes are uh, just a little bit bigger. But not a ton of play, so try to, to mark it out nice so you don't have to take it apart and oval things out. Alright, on to the next step. So I painted the frame rails with a bit of chassis black paint and tossed it over there. It's just a VHT chassis and roll bar paint. The next thing is you're going to have to put in this bar, put some blue Loctite on it, then thread in these studs. So uh, with the studs protruding a bit on the back side, you need about one inch of protrusion on the long side so you don't want to just get that in one thread or something and not sure if you got enough in because you don't want to tear it out when you're uh, tightening things so if you got about an inch sticking out on the frame side you should be okay so I'm gonna take the studs off snake it in there put on a bit of blue Loctite and put in the studs all right, so installation's all done. Sorry, it's getting a bit dark. Hopefully you can uh, see a little bit of what happened here. So uh, I think you might only be able to thread in these bolts from one direction, because it was tricky on the one side and I might've just not picked up on that on the first side. Um, you get everything snugged up for the most part before you put this together, but you need to have it a bit loose so you can get everything in position. This bolt here is the hardest one to do the final tightening. I used a drift you slide it in to jam the uh, head of the uh, bolt there so it can't spin there's not enough space to get a wrench in there but uh, this usually works pretty good as a, a trick um, I don't know if we can see the angles very well or not but we're up on an angle to begin with so that's probably level so we're pretty straight so it's uh after it all came together, I guess it's not as serious as I thought it was with the angle of the uh, ends, but I wanted to get it right. I'm going to make sure I was going to be happy with it, so I, I stopped yesterday just to do a bit of research. I'll slide back here a bit more. Look at the final position here on the differential. It's kind of hard to see. This is the exhaust pipe here. That's the bar. So uh, I don't have my tape here anymore. If I got about four inches uh, of space there. So I gotta investigate that. It's gonna just clip it by a little bit. So I gotta fix that. 
and I looked at some other installations and uh, it turns out that these tabs are variable in height on the different model years. In the uh, pictures of the installation manual, it's full width and uh, these bolts just barely clear on either side. So uh, maybe up to 2004 that spot's a bit narrower. But uh, anyway, I think everything worked out really well. It's actually it's a pretty good job to do. You have to do it with the vehicle on its uh, weight. That's why I use the ramps. If you did it unloaded, uh, I don't think it would be that easy to install. Or it wouldn't be quite as obvious where to put the end links. If you look at the pictures carefully that uh, came from Helwig, they've driven it on a, a drive-on ramp to do the installation. So that would be another way if you have access to that. And then uh, I used a hydraulic jack just to lift up the uh, ends and hold them in position while I was working. You could use a jack stand or something to do that instead. So, uh, looks like the differential is serviceable. Sorry, it's kind of dark. The camera's not going to pick it up very well. But, uh, yeah, it's a good installation. Hopefully it works out. I'm not going to do a ride report or any of that. You'll have to do the research on your own as to whether it's suitable. But I... The company's got a good reputation, so I'm expecting that there won't be a problem. I had heard that on road treks you couldn't install the sway bar on it. But uh, anyway, it turns out that uh, you can. You do need to move your generator back about three and a quarter inches. Maybe uh, four inches would have been even a bit better based on my experience now. So uh, thank you for watching. See you later.